Hello everyone, my name is Ruslan and welcome to my presentation. I am a Chief Technical Officer at GeoPlot. So, consider if you can teach an AI to learn full delineation based on one manually interpreted slice and gives nice results throughout the 3D space, no matter the seismic size, no matter its complexity or tectonics. Today we're going to talk about one-shot learning framework that is intended to support it. I'm going to explain how we can adapt one-shot learning strategy for geophysics, especially for full delineation, and we'll show you results on very challenging data set from the force competition. One-shot learning is a computer vision problem that tries to answer the question whenever we can teach AI a new class based on a few samples of a new class. For example, we have a survey from geologically challenging area and we need to map all the faults. We have two choices, go with traditional approach or use neural network. Traditional approach, we know all the drawbacks. It can distinguish faults where noise and stratigraphic features present. And we can use the neural network, but it will require from us to have supplied sufficient amount of information to learn from. So, for example, we've manually interpreted tens of slices and we would like to get the result. But as you might expect, it would not work right away because you need to give the information without any contradiction, without any inconsistency, without any ambiguity, so the neural network will learn out of it. If uh, for some reasons interpreter did not pay attention to much of the details, it will end up with the poorly behaving fault probability cube. So to remedy that, there will be a lot of the cases where you need to clean the data that you already labeled, or you need to add more labels, or you can split the volumes. That will require you to move the problem and wasting the time from the interpretation part to the managing this tool that internally intended to help you, but still you are wasting a lot of time. Would it not be better to give the neural network one slice and you will predict the results on for the whole cube without any sacrifices. Today we're going to show you how we could achieve this one short learning level of performance. We're going to discuss what the data set we're using, what is the neural network and the training process that we took in order to attain this performance. So we started describing the data that we used to, for the training process. We use forward modeling in order to simulate various types of features within the seismic. We create this data set of the synthetically generated images for the training process. So why not the manually interpreted slices? It is because it takes a lot of effort to precisely map the faults in the seismic image so that the neural network can extract value. Somebody might be tempted to use already collected corpse of data from all projects, but is still doomed to face the reality of data cleaning and conditioning due to human error ambiguity that might lead to contradiction. On the other hand, synthetically generated data set does not struggle with the problem of label quality or data set size. Generally, any situation can be approximated. Well, of course, when the data distribution can be different from the real data set, but we can deal with it. Our synthetic generation of workflow consists of several stages. Firstly, we define a reflectivity model, then the fold installment, and then we work with the noises. Noises are created so that it would look like a real images. And this is actually how we bring our distribution closer to real one. As a result, we have hundreds of thousands of unique samples with clear fault definitions and without any subjective view. In geophysics, they've been applied a variety of different neural networks. Today, I'm going to share with you the unit architecture which consists of an encoder-decoder part. The network takes the, as an input raw seismic data and outputs fault segmentation. Fault delineation in our case is treated as a binary segmentation problem. A neural network training goes through several stages. At first stage, we train it with a synthetically generated data set. Then we verify the results on unseen data set. If the result was not fine, we will go back to optimization stage. We'll work with the architecture, with the weights, so that it would become better. If everything was fine at that stage, we go further on the second verification stage on real data set. If everything's fine, we'll release the new weights. If it's not, then we'll go to the back of our synthetic generation dataset parameters and try to work with them. That means that our dataset that's been generated does not really com comprehend the features that in real dataset we have. By using this workflow, we're always confident that the synthetic generated dataset will be as close as possible to the real one. We cannot go far before defining the metrics we are using to assess the quality of the neural network. 
At each stage, we have to assess the quality on their synthetic generated data set or real data set. We need to understand how far we went off of the full delineation part. In literature, there have been a lot of different methods used for segmentation problems. Intersection over union, precision recall of one score dice coefficient, to name a few. The most used metric for full delineation is F1 score, which balances both precision and recall. We use the same metric as F1 score in our studies. So we have trained neural network on the synthetic generated data set and verified its performance on real data set. So it's going to work in 70% of the general cases that we see in the world. 70% of the case, that means we have similar folding, folding structure, noise level that we've modeled with our synthetic generation. When we deal with geologically challenging seismic cube, for example, in cases where geology was not included in forward modeling or migrational noises or other impurities in the real seismic data, the pursuit of perfection in fault detection would inevitably lead us to transfer learning. Transfer learning is a term from data science that basically means taking really good performing neural network that is trained on some data set and adapt it on the desired data set, usually by supplying labeled example. In geophysics and fault delineation, that means supplying tens of interpreted slices. Basically, our work is dedicated to ease the process of transfer learning. And instead of providing tens of slices, provide just one slice for the transfer learning process. We demonstrate the application of one-shot learning on Adela Field, now west of Australia. This dataset was yeah. used at the first 2020 competition for fault detection. Here we can see several sections of this dataset. If we take a look at the inline section, we can see there is a two distinct faulting system. In the shallow part, there is a smaller connector fault. In the deeper part, there is a bigger fault, regional faulting. The deeper part has a relatively low signal to noise ratio. As well as we can see that coherency based attributes provide us with completely noisy pictures. Uh, to use one shot learning, we gotta supply one interpreter slice in each direction. So we've got C line and cross line, which sums up to two slices. For the interpretation purposes, it's better to take the inline and cross line that are easier to interpret. Uh, we selected and interpreted slices number in line 4385 and cross line 76 or all for training and for validation purpose in line 4245. We don't need to separate the volume into shallow part and deeper part and work with them separately. After interpreting the slices, we start with transfer learning process. It takes a few thousand of iterations to complete and because we have only two slices to learn from, it goes really fast. The process is controlled with F1 score. Here we can see how neural network learned the training features. The picture is consistent without the prediction. All the faults jointed in 2D and 3D space. And finally, in the shallow part, we can see the faulting structure, whereas in coherency based attributes, there was only one noise. The deeper part is well defined now. The most interesting to see is the ability of neural network for the generalization based on one slice of data in each direction, how it's going to work for the whole. Uh, we have taken the inline 42, 45 for the validation purposes. Let's look into that. We see almost identical match between label data and the prediction of the neural network. That assures us of the quality of the training process. Here is how the network predicts in 3D space. We can see a very consistent picture. To sum up today's talk, let's consider the differences between one-shot learning and traditional transfer learning approaches. One-shot learning requires fewer slices of data to train the neural network and hence uh, less subjective knowledge introduced into the system. When we are dealing with distinct geology of the faulting system, you don't need to separate volumes. It's indeed faster machine learning workflow that eliminates wasted hours by the practitioners. We always can select the slices where we're most confident of the faulting and use that for the training example. Thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. I'll be happy to reply to all your questions in the Q&A session.